Hey everybody, welcome back to the 1RC YouTube channel. Today we got a little closer look at a truck that's been lurking in the background in the last few videos. This is another 3906 Emax that uh, had bought this from a buddy back in 2007. He got into the hobby. This was his first truck and honestly for a first truck it wasn't great for him. <laughs> he uh, put the brand new Novak brushless system in it and the truck was way too fast for its own good. Ended up having to replace about every part on it. That that brushless system was way more power than this truck could handle. So we uh, pulled it out. We've got that brushless system sitting in a different truck. Uh, this one's now got a Titan 775 and EVX2 in it. Um, the body you see here is the old Proline VW Beetle. Uh, this was the original Max Beetle body that Proline made way back when. This was uh, the first upgrade that he had made to the truck. Recently took the uh, the body off, scuffed the outside of it, masked it up, painted it on the outside with the spastic color changing paint as a way to kind of revitalize it. The old paint had seen better days. You can see we got a little color change effect going there. Um, I love this paint. It's uh, such a, a good finish. The results are, are great for the price. Eh, 12 bucks a can, you can't beat it. Um, for wheels, we've got the Ofna 17mm 3.2 inch dish wheels. Now these are the half inch offset. These were for the original Monster Pirate. Um, they fit a standard max size 3.2 inch tire and use a 17mm hex. This one has an old set of Ofna 17mm adapters. I don't even know if we can see them. Yeah, there we go. Those were hard to come by back in the day. <laughs> Uh, these have been upgraded with uh, Traxxas screw pins instead of the small set screws that constantly broke. <clears throat> Again, for power, we've got a Titan 775 and an EVX2. That's a custom machine motor mount. Let's see if we can get it in there. There we go. Big soup can of a motor on an aluminum mount. Uh, it's a single motor mount. And uh, it's fairly thick. It's four millimeters thick. Holds up pretty well. Um, we ha you have to take the torque ring off of the motor to get it to clear the transmission case. It's one thing I kind of don't like about that motor mount, but it is such a large motor. Kind of have to take it where you can get it. Um, for shocks, using uh, ZD Racing 120 millimeter Truggy shocks. They're a 16 millimeter bore. Um, they're a little soft. You can probably see here, they're just, it's a heavy truck though. <clears throat> Allergies are getting to me again, goodness gracious. West Virginia in the summertime, I tell you, everything's either blooming or putting off pollen right now. So we've got a set of aluminum bumpers on the truck. Um, that was part of an RC Raven kit that he had bought. Come with a servo guard, aluminum bumpers. It had aluminum body posts that broke the first time he ran it. Um, this truck just kind of beats itself to death, to be real honest with you. To handle the power, we had put Robinson Racing diffs inside of it, aluminum cups. This one's got aluminum bulkheads, an aluminum rear diff case. Um, it's got MIP CVDs all the way around. That's $200 worth of drive shafts. Thankfully, those hold up to the power. Um, uh, this one's also got our... Custom 20-tooth idler gears inside the transmission. Um, it's still on a stock style slipper, but it does have a Robinson Racing steel spur gear on it. Uh, we're running a cheap 25 kilogram servo, and it's got a FlySky GR3 receiver in it. So it runs off of our GT3B uh, transmitter. <clears throat> Underneath, we've got a, a complete rpm skid plate from front to rear really ties everything together and underneath that that wear plate are aluminum skids that help tie the bulkheads together on a the original emacs aluminum bulkheads and aluminum skid plates were really about the only way to get the chassis to survive um broke a couple of chassis tubs on this truck to be honest with you broke more bulkheads than i can count um, 
it's a fun truck, but it is one that you have to love working on because everything on it you can figure is an hour's work. There's no easy task on an Emax. Um, I really, I, I do like them. I, I'm not saying anything bad about them. They're just, they have their personality quirks. Uh, this one, I'm going to show you here, also has the chassis tub cut. Not sure if the camera's really picking that up. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see there's a complete section missing there. And the reason that I did that is before I switched over to running uh, shorty lipos, which are about the only lipo that fits in that old style battery tray, I ran seven cell nickel metal hump packs, but I would flip them upside down and have the extra cell sticking down through the chassis, which was the only way to get a seven cell in this truck. And that Titan 775, it needs some voltage. So that was about the best way I could find of, of feeding it the voltage it needed. The, uh, the wing and wing mount is just something I put on to make the back of the car look a little bit better. It's just a bent piece of aluminum with an old Proline wing. That, I've had that on everything. Originally, it was drilled for my old Ofna LX1 8th scale buggy. And that, I think I got that thing in 2006 or 2007. So <laughs> that wing's been kicking around for a minute. Um, okay, we're going to take the 3906 out for a quick rip this evening. Got some Ovonic 4600 2S shorty packs to run in the truck. Uh, because of the size of the battery trays in this truck, it's a little difficult sometimes to find lipos to fit. Uh, we do have a couple of pieces of foam in the battery tray just to snug everything up. And this side, we snake it under the motor plate. Pull one lead close the battery tray and put the battery lead back in. Now you may have noticed that there was a piece of electrical tape on the battery lead. Um, that is there just to keep the ballast, pl uh, ballast plug out of the way while running the truck. Um, the way that the ballast plugs are on this tr on these batteries, they can can get in the way. So just do that as a preventative measure got the motor wires kind of tucked out of the way there uh, we're trying out our new GoPro Hero 8 today see how this does got a got a head strap here just to try everything out and always use a lipo sack transporting charging batteries um, there's that piece of electrical tape that's holding <laughs> just to keep the balance plug safe. Now this side, there's not as much trouble because of the motor plate design. Basically just plop the battery in, plug the power lead back in. Be making a uh, custom set of leads for this truck that don't have balance ports in them. Got our FlySky FSGT3B ready to go. And get the batteries plugged in. Now with the EVX2 of course, the power button is on the speed control. So I quite got the two speed lined out on this truck. Um, so we will be running it entirely in I believe second with the gear selector pushed all the way into the transmission I just need to make some more adjustments um, didn't get a chance to finish that up the other day uh, 
These little Dubro quick clip body clip retainers are the handiest aftermarket solution I've found to losing body clips. As you can hear that all steel transmit that those idlers and that steel spur make some racket. <laughs> Actually, I'm looking and this may actually be first gear. Um, the truck, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't pull the front end up that badly in second gear. Let's put our glasses back on here. You can see I can't, <laughs> um, but yeah, this is quite a loud truck. Thanks to the uh, steel spur and pinion gear set up. Looks like you got one of the tree branches down here. Um, definitely looks like we're going to have to go up a little bit on rear spring rate and rear shock oil. Uh, definitely underdamped at the rear. Just why you see it really planting the rear and carrying the front. Little bit of a heads up as well. You can see the stakes that are in the yard here. Um, I definitely see that one there and this one here. Well, matching are two more down here in the bottom of the property. This is gonna be the site of our new off-road track. Uh, we're gonna have a large dirt oval on the outside, off-road course in the middle. Uh, this is where all of our tire testing and everything is going to be done next year. Measured out, it's going to be a little over 2,000 square feet. Um, going to have... Uh, I'm only setting it up with 8-foot lanes simply for the fact that I don't, we don't have anybody else running here, so it's only me. Um, plus the uh, slightly narrower lanes are gonna put a more of a focus on on consistency. I think we broke the truck, guys. Looks like we may be down a couple of wheel drive. The joys of running an Emacs. <sighs> yeah, we don't have uh, front wheel drive now. Okay, we figured out the uh, the issue with front drive. Simply popped out front dog bone. <laughs> see it here that shouldn't be there um, I'll get that put back together off camera but unfortunately that was a that was a pack 
that is about as long as it runs on a 4600 two cell pack um, on 4S. You can see the truck really, uh, it, it's way under damped in the rear and it's not the best in the front. Um, I would like to go up a couple of spring rates in the rear if I can find springs for these shocks and definitely go up a bit on the shock oil weight. I think it's got 45 weight in it now. I'll probably go up to a 60 to start and go from there. Um, this is a two hole piston. Um, I remember before we were running a hundred weight, but that was in a different shock package. And that was also in four eighths, uh, four tenth scale shocks. So that'll need to be straightened out. Um, but once the track's done, we'll definitely take it back out for another rip and see how it fares. Future upgrades for this truck. I believe this truck is going to get the brushless system. We had alluded to, to maybe putting it in the show truck, but that truck doesn't need a bunch of horsepower. All that's going to do is tear up bodies. So I may put the 775 and the EVX2 in the show truck and put a uh, waterproof SC8 hobby wing system in this one, maybe with a 2650 or a, I want to get real nutty, put a 2200 in it on 6S. I'd really rather not run this truck on 6S. It doesn't need to be any faster. Um, the handling just isn't there and the wheelbase is way too short. <laughs> Uh, 6S in this, all you're going to do is either brake drivetrain components because it's still got plastic gears inside the transmission, or it's going to do backflips. And that's your really only two choices. When we had the Novak HV Max brushless system in it originally, on 12 cell nickel metal, it was enough to do standing backflips. You know, this was before the days of lithium batteries, uh, back in the dark ages. But that, that power system, of course, we had a, a four and a half turn. It was the HV 4.5. This was a 550 motor, and they claim it was a four and a half turn. Uh, whether or not how they rated that, I'm not sure. But that motor had a ton of power, and it would shred parts in this truck. I've never seen something strip every, gear, every tooth off of the ring gear. Every one. Now, I've, seen, I've seen my nitro truck... My Nitro T-Max with point twenty one in it, take a tooth off of it here or there. That's understandable. This thing cleaned it off. Um, not not a good combo for this truck. <laughs> it it just it needed it needed the upgrades that came along with the thirty nine oh threes, fives, and eights. That all steel transmission, the single speed, you know, it, it was just so much more robust, so much more able to handle the torque. This was good for what it was. You know, twin Titan 550s on 12 cell nickel, <laughs> nickel cadmium was the first batteries I ever had in one of these. But, you know, NICADs or nickel metal batteries, they were good trucks. They weren't super fast. They were fast enough to get you into trouble, but they, they worked. You start upgrading one thing, and then you, from that point on, from the first upgrade on, you're just chasing the next weak link until you end up with a truck that's 90% aftermarket components. Um, anybody looking to build an Emax, I would recommend just building it from parts. It's going to be cheaper than buying an RTR and replacing one part at a time. I will tell you that. Uh, they're not cheap. <laughs> they're not cheap to build at all. And there are much better platforms out there in the end, but they have their quirks, they have their personality, and this one's no different. I, I still to this day enjoy running this truck, and will continue to do so. I just wanted to give, give everybody a little sneak peek, get the truck off the bench, and if nothing else, just get to show off that paint. I love that Spastix paint, and uh, glad that it turned out okay. It saved an old body. As you can see, it's got holes cut all in it, and... Like I said, it was the guy's first body. He painted it up himself. Did a good job on it. I'm not knocking anything he did. It's just 15 years later, the thing needed replaced or repainted. So 
If you have any questions, drop them down below in the comment box. Be more than glad to help. If you're not already subscribed, please do so. We'd love to have you. It's free of charge. We won't send you an invoice, I promise. Uh, click the notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos as they come out. And I believe that's going to do it for today. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in.